Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we are looking at some more uh, Three Kingdoms uh, characters, lords, legendary heroes, whatever, whatever you want to call them, um, whatever they happen to be called. So anyway, this uh, today I did actually in the previous episode when I was talking about Cao Cao uh, get this wrong. Um, no, it's uh, Gongsun Zan, or at least something like that. It's not a J unless there's a Z H. You don't do it the soft thing like uh, Dong Zhuo. It's, it's it's I think it stays as a Z mostly. So, uh, Gong Soon Zan, I think is more accurate. So anyway, uh, Gong Soon Zan, that's what we're going to be doing now. We're going to be looking at this guy. So, disclaimer, as always, um, well, it's at the top of every, every one of these, so anyway. All details included below are subject to change as development continues and should not be considered final. But we'll get the gist at least. So here's uh, the knight, Gong Soon Zan. So, a military-minded man who sees ruling a state much like commanding an army has long protected the northern territories against foreign invaders. Now it falls to him to defend these lands from the power-hungry warlords to the south, offers increased reinforcement range for his armies, and has access to unique white horse cavalry. Interesting. So, um, nickname isn't the knight. It's the Iron Fist General. Okay, this this keeps not making much sense to me, but anyway, his hero class is Vanguard. Again, there's a rock, paper, scissors thing with hero classes that um, I don't fully understand yet, so we'll get into that when we start playing the game, probably. So who is he? So Gong Soon Zan is a military-minded man who sees ruling a state much like commanding an army. He's long defended. The... Okay, let's just skip ahead, shall we? Um... Oh, okay. It doesn't actually. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't actually um, completely talk about that. So Gong Soon Zan is a military-minded man who sees ruling a state much like commanding an army. He's long defended the northern territories against the barbarians, along with uh, Liu Yu, Liu Yo, no Liu 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 Yo. I think. Yeah, Liu Yo? No, it's Liu Yu. Yes, it's Yu, and it says no, in which case it's Yo. Cool. So, Liu Yo. Liu Yu, rather. Anyway, however, a rivalry between them uh, due to their differences in approach. Liu Yu uh, favoured a more lenient policy towards the uh, Wu. <laughs> So please stop throwing Chinese names at me. It's going to keep doing this. Guys, uh, disclaimer in the first one. Yeah, pinch of salt. All right, I'm, I'm getting better. I'm getting better at pronouncing this stuff. But, it, yeah, I'm still learning. It's uh, it's tough to just learn Chinese, you know, for a video game. It's it's not easy. So, uh, uh, Wu Huan and uh, Xian Bi. Xian Bi. Yeah, Xian Bi. Anyway. Peoples. Uh, while Gong Soon Zan's was far more hardline, he used white horses when dealing with uh, Wu, Wu, Wu Huan people as they considered them to be a holy animal and wouldn't attack him. Wow! That is. That, that's mean. That is mean. In the cacophony of rising chaos, Gong Soon Zan is heard like a clarion call above the fray. He stands firm in his beliefs and is unafraid to do what he feels is right. A childhood friend of Liu Bei. Uh, Gong Soon Zan earned his, a reputation as a fierce warrior, defending the empire against foreign foes beyond the border. Gong Soon Zan rules his lands with the same martial mindset with which he governs his forces. On the dangerous fringes of the empire, military precision in all things must be observed. Whichever allies he chooses, it remains to be seen whether Gong Soon Zan can successfully seize the north and establish a, dy a dynastic line strong enough to see him become emperor. Playstyle Gong Soon Zan is a traditionally uh, traditional military-minded character, and his playstyle reflects this, focusing on a military uh, militaristic approach. I can't even say the English words now. This is how much my brain has been jumbled by all this. Um, bear with me, guys. Approach to empire management. Gong Soon Zan doesn't have access to administrators, but instead has his civic matters overseen by the commanding generals of his armies who also provide bonuses to the commanderies in which they're stationed. Gong Soon Zan himself provides two important bonuses as faction leader. The first is a 50% reinforcement range bonus, meaning that his armies are more likely to reinforce each other in all situations. This makes him particularly strong when he's on the defensive, and synergizes well with the civic bonuses gained from his commanding generals. The second is his shock cavalry, which are more heavily armored compared to other factions, and as such are more durable in combat. However, both of these bonuses are specific to Gong Soon Zan, meaning that they will be both lo uh, they will both be lost should he fall and be replaced by his heir. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? That's a pity. Uh, Gong Soon Zan's faction also benefits from the command of the unique White Horse Archer Cavalry. These are the, some of the most powerful horse archer units in game. 
and can be used for a number of potent strategies in battle. That sounds pretty scary. So, Guan Xi. Um, Gong Zuzan grew up with Liu Bei and maintains a good relationship with his former school friend. Furthermore, he also starts out with uh, Zhao, uh, Zhao, uh, Yun, Zhao Yun under his command. One of the greatest warriors of the Three Kingdoms, period. Hmm, sounds handy. So, um, yeah, again, slightly weird formatting here. Uh, Gong Xun Zhan, uh, Gong Xun, Gong Xun Zhan, still, still tough stuff. It's a muscle memory thing, guys. Anyway, grew up with Liu Bei and maintains a good relationship with his former school friend. Furthermore, he also starts with, uh, Xiao, uh, Zhao Yun under his command, one of the greatest warriors three kings period. However, Although rich in friends, he has no children of his own, and so ensuring that he is in a strong position of succession, strong, uh, sorry, he has a strong line of succession in place is an important part of Gong Xu Zhan's dynastic strategy. Interesting. Starting position. So, your rival, uh, Liu Yu, is, is a significant threat is to the west, and it falls to you, defender of the north, to defeat him. Meanwhile, your other neighbor, Yuan Chao, grows ever more powerful and conflict with him is almost inevitable unless you can find a way to negotiate interesting so he starts right up in the corner does he cool so gong soon zan's starting in uh, starting position in uh yo yo bei ping uh i think that's, i think i might have got that right yeah yeah yo bei ping uh commander is relatively secure it can be easily be turned into a stronghold but breaking out of it is no mean feat your rival liu yu is in the west posing a significant threat it falls to you, Defender of the North, to defeat him and win control of the surrounding areas. You need to unify the North before the chaos overtakes it. Meanwhile, your other neighbor, Yuan Chao, uh, grows ever more powerful, and conflict with him is almost inevitable, unless you can find a way to negotiate with him and Han Fu, and turn a historical enemy into an ally. So his initial dilemma. Your generals urge you to take the fight your rival, Liu Yu, and prevent him from cutting off your expansion. Meanwhile, a letter has arrived from your old ally, Yuan Chao, requesting you assault Han Fu, promising wealth and riches if you do so. Interesting. Will you take the chance to defeat your rival, Liu Yu, or do you join your friend and attack Han Fu? Cool. It's going to be interesting to see what uh, you know how that plays out. But, I mean, options for expanding early is, is just charge downwards, isn't it? It's just get involved. Straight away, by the looks of it. Um, I'll just, there's another commandery just north of him here, which is interesting. So I'm not sure who that'll be. So yeah, interesting. Interesting stuff. Should be cool. So, uh, in each... Uh, wait, yep. In each Warlord campaign, they will face a unique dilemma after fulfilling certain prerequisite actions. These dilemmas will position the player at a fork in the road, marking a pivotal moment in the Warlord story. One of the options available to you is a choice reflecting what happened in history, and the outcomes will follow the events of the period. The other lets you forge a tale of what might have been. Total War is all about giving players the freedom to create their own stories and uh, in some of the most exciting periods in human history, and these initial dilemmas epitomize that spirit. There is a conflict brewing between Gong Sun Zan and the neighboring Liu Yu, who adopted a very different and more lenient strategy when dealing with the uh, Wu Huan and uh, Xiang Bi peoples. Uh, Liu Yu is also supported by Dong Zhuo, and Gong Sun Zan is resentful about Liu Yu's success. Additionally, Yuan Shao is asking for aid against Han Fu, meaning you can't choose to channel your resources towards this conflict. In, uh, sorry, meaning you can choose to channel your resources towards the conflict in an attempt to appease him. Hmm, interesting. On which of these two conflicts will you focus, and where will you direct your resources? Campaign progression. Gong Sun Zan's initial focus should be securing a stronghold in the north. This could incorporate securing an alliance with uh, Gong Sun Du, who, uh, but it might also, uh, it also might be more efficient to subjugate Gong, uh, Gong Sun Du and dominate the area entirely. This could also be an opportunity to take out your rival Yu Yu and lay claim to the Han Empire region. Once this stronghold is established, your progression will inevitably lead west, where conflict with Yuan Chao is very likely. As such, it might be wise to find allies beyond Yuan Chao's uh, realm, such as his half-brother Yuan Shu and, and the cunning Cao Cao, who we've talked about already. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's linking together, guys. Yeah, it's linking together. Or even the bandits in the mountain, uh, Zhang Yan or Zhang Jiang. 
Finally, Gong Tsun Zan must move to secure the North and the ultimate goal, um, and the ultimate goal of becoming Emperor, which seems to be everyone's goal, really. So, what kind of player is Gong Tsun Zan for? Gong Tsun Zan is a choice of expert militarists. He is a warrior without fear or restraint, but also a defensive master when the situation requires it. Bravery is his calling card, and if there's an obstacle he has to conquer, you'd better hope he's on your side. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. So, uh, and again, there is further reading. I will be linking um, this this blog in all of the videos um, of this series, so you can find the you know the stuff to look at. Um, or you could, I guess, just pause this and type that into your your Alpa. Seems like a hassle, so maybe just click the link. So yeah, so there we go. That's uh, Gong Soon Zan. So pretty cool, pretty cool. And uh, next up, we're going to be looking at Kong Rong. So be sure to tune in for that one. So guys, if you enjoyed this, please do comment, like, subscribe, and uh, tune in for the next one. Have a good day, guys.